number 18, Mark Stahl. The point of when you know, I realized I was in the NHL was starting to line up of in my first game in the Master Garden, uh, skating on the ice was, uh, was pretty incredible. And you kind of had to pinch yourself at the time. I had never been to New York uh, prior to being drafted. Actually, I rolled the subway to the game, which was uh, a pretty unique experience in itself. So I was kind of got the I'm a Ranger and uh, in the NHL kind of all in the same shot. So it was it's a pretty cool experience. Yeah, being part of the Rangers and you know all their rich history and original six teams has been amazing. And you walk into the, you know MSG or, or even the training facility and it's just a very proud organization. Mark Stahl just keeps getting better and better. It was pretty uh, pretty intense. You know, it's a far cry from from the place I grew up, obviously. Hey, this is Mark Stahl. Uh, welcome to my hometown of Thunder Bay, Ontario. I'm excited to show you guys around today and uh, show you where it all began for me. The Thunder Bay is you know, pretty unique in that it's probably a you know, six, seven hour drive to the nearest city that's close to its size. And, you know, we're kind of our own little uh, community that uh, supports each other. It's a very close town. You uh, always meet somebody who you know, is your mom, or they know your dad, or they know other family or friends. So a lot of people here are connected in those kind of ways, but it's a, it's a very friendly town. It's a great place to grow up and a great place to come back in the summers. They're all you know, hardworking and um, very respectful and, and friendly. So you know, obviously the more years we play in NHL, you know, the, more, the more years we're, we're on TV and things like that, our people here seem to recognize us a, a lot more. But everyone here is uh, very respectful of, of your space. You know, they're very relaxed that way, which is, you know, makes it a lot easier just to go around town and, and to, to, to come back every summer because we, you know, we really enjoy it. We're uh, pulling into my parents' house where I grew up. Uh, growing up uh, with my family was, was a lot of fun. We, you know, obviously kept each other busy with me having three brothers and being out in the, in the country, we had a you know a lot to do and a lot of time outside. Mark was when he was growing up, he was pretty funny. He was uh, kind of the clown of the family. I think he always uh, make making faces and trying to make everybody laugh. So he was a great kid to have around. But we didn't have any furniture in our living room for a long time, or you know, so they would use it as a um, knee hockey room. <laughs> We had a rink out in the front of the yard and then we moved it to the side of the yard and after school they would run down the driveway and say, you know, did you flood the rink, mom or dad? And then we say, yeah, it's all cleaned off and they would get their skates on and they would just go and they just, you know, loved it. And you know, we first got into hockey, my dad played. Uh, obviously he loved the game, loved to watch it. He basically just put us in skates when we were four or five years old and kind of went from there. And Growing up with three brothers doing the same thing, it was I think, a big help for us. We didn't like to lose to each other. Uh, it kind of drove us to be better players. And Yeah, it, we brought our competition into everything we did. Playing in a pool or ping pong or, or anything. That gut feeling when you get when you lose, uh, especially to your brother, uh, it was never nice. The teams were always me, Jordan against Eric and Jared, and uh, they get pretty heated. We'd, we'd never have any goalies, but we'd always play hit the post. It never came to fists or anything like that, but there were a few uh, sticks being thrown when, when things weren't going uh, each other's way. We always dreamt about playing in the NHL. I think at the time, obviously, you don't think, you obviously can't guarantee anything, but uh, in your mind, you're going to do it. Eric Stahl, shoot one, he scores! Watching Eric go through and, and, and making it, that was incredible made me want it more and knowing that I've played with him and, and played against him and kind of thinking like you know, 
he's not that good and I could do that so it was kind of like that you know I got in there at 16 and just you know, try to play as much and, and try to be the best player on your team and, and then just go from there. My first organized hockey was when I was 15 I got drafted to a Sudbury in the junior league in the OHL. Mark Stahl has to play it. Nice rush there by Akima Lou. Boy when he gets ahead of steam not too many people are going to stop him. Speaking of a good head of steam here Stahl got it by Stahl! had me thrown into like you know some professional league you're still going to high school you're getting paid 40 dollars a week but you're still you know you're playing in front of three you know to seven thousand people and it uh you know, as soon as I got a taste of that when I was 16, uh, you know, there was no looking back. I loved it. Now we're here at uh, the pond in my backyard. My dad used to use this for irrigation for his fields, but in November it frees up quick before my dad could uh, get ice on our uh, on our rink ready. So we let's get out here for about you know two or three weeks before our uh, our rink that he built us uh, was up and running. So it actually worked out really well for us. Uh, we had a lot of good times out here. We always knew it was back there. We didn't know it, it, it uh, froze as, as smooth and, and uh, you know, as hard as it did that early. You know, we loved it. It was short-lived because uh, the rink usually uh, followed uh, pretty quickly behind that. But uh, we had a uh, you know a lot of good games out there. So how does it feel to be installed? Um, it, it's good. I mean, it really doesn't feel any different because we have been together for quite some time, but. It's a good feeling knowing that. Me and uh, my wife, Lindsay, uh, went to the same high school. Our very first class in grade nine was our class, and he actually sat across the table from me. So that's the first time I ever you know, met him or laid eyes on him, I guess you could say. He was very shy. He didn't talk much. He was cute. Yeah, cute little guy with braces. <laughs> we always kind of had that little high school crush on each other, but nothing really came of it. It wasn't until later on when we actually started going out and seeing each other. A few years ago, just uh, took her to Applebee's for a nice afternoon uh, date. Yeah, I was working at the college at the time, so I only had about an hour for lunch. It was a very short date. It was good. It was nice. We just hit it off from there. We've had a great uh, you know, three years from now. We're uh, looking forward to uh, married life. This is it. Where I grew up, uh, pretty much spending all my summers. There's a lot of life lessons that are identical to laying saw and hockey. <laughs> they were pretty small when they were working. This is it. This is my dad and uncle's sod farm. Uh, they bought it off of my opa, which is my dad's dad. Yeah, it's a little bit of a family business. And this is where I grew up, uh, pretty much spending all my summers. So. Hard work and a lot of hours. Cheap labor for my old man. So. This is uh, my dad Henry, and uh, we're at his, uh, his sod farm up in uh, beautiful Thunder Bay. We caught him here hard at work. So. Laying sod is the is probably the worst. If you have a day like this where it's hot and you're just sweating and you have dirt and then it sort of turns into mud. But you know when you have a good group of guys and friends and stuff like that, it makes it a little bit more enjoyable. There's a lot, a lot of life lessons that are identical to laying sod and hockey. It's all about hard work. You do what you have to do, and you'll learn how to work, you'll learn how to work with others, you'll learn how to take, you know, as a boss, as a coach, same thing. We basically all worked pretty much all summer growing up. We'd be doing different jobs a lot of the times, but most of the part we were after school, mom would pick us up and you know, ready to work, had a sandwich in the car and, and uh, drop us off, you know, wherever we were working at the time. That's only if you didn't have hockey. Only if you didn't have hockey. We had hockey. Hockey, yeah, hockey, yeah, hockey that, usually. That was a bonus. Uh, here we are in the uh, middle of a sod field in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, the cutter is going on right now, and this is where it all began as far as working for me. It hasn't changed uh, too much since I last uh, put on my sod shoes. This is my, uh, my Uncle Gary, my dad's brother, uh, also owns the, the sod farm. Yeah, he's uh, one of my bosses growing up uh, over here. And... <laughs> they were pretty small when they were working. Like, they were probably. You guys are 9, 10 and you're hanging around, but by 12 years old, come on, they're old enough to do whatever. Yeah, you might want to not put that in there, but uh, they were laying sod at, at 10 years old. Oh, yeah. I don't know, he never complained. He was good. He had long arms, too, so if you're laying sod, you can set a reach from one end to the other. <laughs> he had the body for it. Yeah, I had the sod laying body. He did. We lost yeah. another guy to hockey. Yeah. We'd had a big company right away. <laughs> <laughs> that right there 
is the exact same tractor that I went in when I was seven, eight years old. It hasn't changed much. Same forklift too, actually, that I used. Knocked over a few pallets of that thing. Yeah. I quit as soon as I signed my first NHL contract. Same with Eric, they weren't allowed to. No, I, I, I worked that summer. Yeah, I mowed. I think you did. I, don't, I, think you I just mowed. I sat on the tractor, but I mean, I'm Until still you went there. to New York, you were falling with more. Until I signed. That's why we are, are where we are. It's all because of Sod. Yes, everything we have now is because of Sod. My draft year was the lockout year, so uh, we weren't even sure if there was going to be a draft. So it was a lot different than the, the previous one. Silent too. The whole room was just yeah, dead yeah, silent. Yeah, you could, you could hear a pin drop. Like I knew I was going to get drafted, so I wasn't that nervous of, of when. I didn't really care when I went. My agent told me that he couldn't see me slipping past the top three. I think he said, or near top, no top four. Got down about eight or nine. I looked at him, shaking my head. He was not happy, and, uh, but it was it was kind of more funny than anything. When New York traded up, I had a feeling that, that they were going to take me. You know, I was thrilled to. You know, when they called my name, obviously, and, and got up there on stage and put the jersey over my head, it was a, you know, a pretty incredible feeling. My mom was probably the most nervous and, and frightened about the whole thing. Uh, when I heard that Mark got drafted to New York, I was you know, pretty much sick to my stomach. Anywhere but New York, I thought. New York's a big city, and you know, coming you know, from Thunder Bay, we don't have any subways, we don't, you know, not too many high risers, you know, and it's, you know, 100,000 people, and then you're going to, I don't even know, 8 million or whatever. So I just, uh, I thought that was uh, just a little bit too much for an 18 year But after she visited the city and, and saw where I was living, and uh, I know she got a lot more comfortable with it, she loves coming to visit now. Being chased by number 11, Jordan Stahl. Seeing my brother across the ice makes it more personal. You never want to get beat by a brother. I don't like it very much. They always try to prove to the other one who's better. Being chased by number 11, Jordan Stahl. Mark Stahl has the puck. Move against the trouble, Mark. Oh! Seeing my brother across the ice makes it uh, definitely a lot uh, more personal. It always adds another element to the game where you never want to get beat by a brother, especially one-on-one -on -one or, or, or something like that. It's always a lot of fun. I always get really excited to play. Nothing else like it during an NHL game to be going up against your brother, and it never gets older. When I watch the brothers play against each other, my sons, uh, I don't really like it very much. If they're not on the ice at the same time, I'm okay with it. But they always try so much harder against each other and I always think that you know then they might end up hurting each other because they're just trying so hard to prove to the other one who's better. You know I'm just glad we're in the same conference so we get to play each other you know more times than, than once or none. Use this strength against the younger brother. Huh? Round one to Mark Stahl. It's always a lot of fun. It's not fun when you're losing but it's fun when you're winning. We're at uh, my school where I grew up, uh, Thunder Bay Christian. Went here from kindergarten to grade eight. Uh, show you around. We had about 30 kids in our class. It was a great place to go to school. I had Mrs. Hyman in uh, grade six, I believe. She taught all, all four of us coming in through here. And she was a tough teacher, but she made sure that you, you know, got your work done and you got it done on time. Mark was always a very good student. He definitely enjoyed his friends and enjoyed uh, the social part of school. Although he was in a very, very chatty class, they liked to talk a lot. They, they needed to be reminded often that they needed to get back to their work. Yeah. His parents always made sure that school was priority. I remember my hook was around here, because this is the kindergarten class. You're only allowed one, or maybe two if you're lucky, so which is not that much when you have a jacket and snow pants. They would actually let us bring our own sticks from home and we'd be able to play hockey out on the street during the winter, which was uh, kind of rare for schools to let your students bring hockey sticks and go into the playground. And there was always a packing order. Certain classes got to have the certain prime spots and when you got to grade eight, you got to have the, the driveway and, the nets. Uh, and that was big. Yeah, the nets were big. The games were always good, uh, never long enough, but we had some pretty good games. So it was uh, past the time, yeah. 
those little desks. I had a tough time fitting in them. I think I was always a little tall. It's Jordan, right here. Big mouthful of braces. Jordan, yeah, in the back. All the boys fed off of each other. I think that they challenged each other to their competition. I always sensed that there was a camaraderie between the boys. They definitely loved hockey. But I don't think that back then at grade six, I, I ever hoped or thought that any of the, the boys would aspire to the NHL. I always remember telling every one of those early classes, especially your classes, that uh, now remember, only less than 1% of boys will make it to the NHL, so you need to make sure that you're concentrating on your school and on your education. Never did I, did I know back then. The right I had to eat it. my words after yeah. that, since uh, one after another you boys yeah. were making it into the NHL. Yeah. Our school has always tried to be one that is really community and, and parent oriented. Uh, the parents and the teachers work together for the students. The school teaches you values. Keep it was uh, huge for us to learn those things growing up and, and take them into you know what we do now. And we're here uh, right in front of uh, a nice outdoor rink. Uh, me and my brothers donated it a few years ago. There used to be one back there that kind of got run down and, and they didn't have one for a long time and uh, we, you know, we thought it would be a pretty cool idea to build another one. It doesn't really look too much like a hockey rink right now. Uh, it's a little uh, overgrown but you know, winter comes and either the snow will kill all those plants or they'll, uh, they'll mow it down before it, it gets cold. Hockey at recess or hockey anytime is a big part of our lives and you know, hopefully uh, you know, they get to enjoy it for, for a lot of years. This is where my brothers all grew up playing. Having Mark on the team really was a plus, plus. He was very quiet. Uh, lots of times I didn't know if he was still breathing. I had to check. <laughs> the fans are great. You know, die-hard fans. Some hockey markets aren't as big and, and the care isn't as deep. And you can tell right away when you get into Mass Square Garden that their fans uh, you know, live and breathe uh, you know, the Rangers. And... That's, that's a lot of fun to be part of. This is the Norwest Arena where we, me and my brothers all grew up playing. As you can see by the new sign they got. Stop by, see the old place. Uh, I'm here with my coach uh, from 12th AA, Dave McLeod, and, and reminisce on the old stopping grounds. Having Mark on the team really was a plus, plus. He was gifted, you could see, just by watching his ease of handling the puck. He was very quiet, a uh, soft-spoken boy. Uh, lots of times I didn't know if he was still breathing, I had to check. You know, especially if I left him on the bench too long. Yeah, well, that pissed me off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you could see that he had all the potential to go all the way. Yeah, over the last four or five years, we've had uh, three weeks of these skates and found them you know, pretty beneficial going into to camp and into New York, you know, playing with guys that play with you and against you. Yeah, they're good skates and you know, do your best to, to get ready. Uh, I know the years before, uh, you know, your summers were pretty much just relaxing and, and training camp was to get into shape, but it's a little different now. You're putting in uh, three, three and a half months of, uh, of hard work to, just to get yourself into training camp and then uh, go from there. And, but uh, you know, every player has to go through to stay at that level. You have to you know, continually work, continue to try to get better. And you know, with that and the help of you know, coaches and teammates to, to push you, um, will get you to you know, become the best player that you can be. To be named alternate captain was was pretty special. I was never really told about it. I just kind of came in uh, before a game, and it was on my jersey, and it was pretty cool. Add some responsibility, but it, at the same time, it, uh, it's nice to, to be counted on and to looked at in that way. What makes a good leader, I think, is confidence. I think you have to have a lot of confidence in yourself and in, in the people around you. You know, lead by example and, and make sure that 
you know, you're taking care of the guys around you that you get a lot of respect that way and you, know, you just kind of, you know, keep working hard and hopefully, uh, you know, they follow behind. My uh, favorite part of the game is just the game itself, I think. For me, being a part of a team is a huge thing. Um, I've always enjoyed having teammates and winning as a team. It has been a big part of why I love love more than rank. Yeah, being a part of the core, I guess as they as they call it, is, is pretty cool. I, you know, we're all going to be here hopefully for the next you know three or four years at least, and you know with that comes a lot of responsibility, and uh, we know that um, we're expected to win and with, that we want to win. We're excited going forward. Uh, we know there's obviously a lot of pressure as well, but uh, you know we're just going to try to do our best to, to keep the winning ways in, in the Rangers organization. I try to concentrate on my end uh, first, make sure I do my job on my end, make sure I'm shutting guys down and, and being physical. And another hit by Stahl. Look at Stahl with the stick right there. Yeah, what a play by Mark Stahl. You know, I'm still uh, relatively young and, and, and I want to you know, just keep trying to improve as a player as, you know, as best I can every year. I'm very quiet and not uh, in everything I do, but when he's out there, I'd like to put a big sign on, you know, I coached him, <laughs> you know, you feel like it, you think you're just so proud, and when I watch him, even when he, you know, doesn't do very good out there, I still think he's the best. He runs the blue line with just total control. When he has the puck, he knows exactly what he's going to do with it before he even gets to it. Sure, I would like to think that I might have played a little part in, in who they are today, but really I think that it's been um, their parents. Mark's parents really kept them grounded, kept them uh, remembering what was important in, in their lives, their faith, their family, and of course hard work. Huge hit there by Stahl. Well, he's definitely grown into himself. He's become a very caring person, especially when you're thrown into the limelight when you're 16 years old and moving away from town. He's very mature and very independent. He's a very independent person. I'm most proud of Mark. Just being down to earth, he doesn't portray himself as being the best out there. And he just stays true to himself and he's just a humble young man. I think he, he loves it. He says he you know enjoys every bit of it and I think he's uh, proud to uh, put on the blue, red and white. Well, I think we're, we're excited. You know, the ultimate goal is the Stanley Cup, and that's you know, been, our, been my focus, obviously, since I've been a kid. And, you know, we're just going to try to do our best to, you know, to get that accomplished.